Today I'm going to be doing this video message that I've titled Social Distancing and I'm actually going to read from a story in the Bible where this in a way takes place. We're reading from Numbers 16 uh, starting at verse 25 where Moses got up and went to Dathan, Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. He warned the assembly, move back from the tents of these wicked men, do not touch anything that belongs to them or you will be swept away because of all of their sins. So they moved away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Biram. Dathan and Abiram had come out and were standing with their wives, children, and little ones at the entrance of their tents. Then Moses said, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things, and that it was not my idea. If these men die a natural death and suffer the fate of all mankind, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord brings about something totally new, and the earth opens its mouth up and swallows them with everything that belongs to them, and they go down alive to the realm of the dead, then you will know that these men have treated the Lord with contempt. As soon as he finished saying this, the ground under them split apart, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them and their households. And all those associated with Korah, together with their possessions, they went down alive into the realm of the dead with everything they owned. And the earth closed over them, and they perished, and they were gone from the community. At their cries, all the Israelites around them fled, shouting, the earth is going to swallow us too. So, here we have these several men that uh, raise up and create this following to band against Moses because they're jealous of his leadership and they're, they're, uh, they're getting insubordinate and they're trying to oppose Moses. So, God basically says, get away from them. Move back. Move back. Back up. Get away from all of them and all they own. And so... I find that interesting because uh, God is telling them, you know, move away so you don't get swept away when I punish them for all of their sins. And so there are times, spiritually, we have to take some precautionary, precautionary measures when dealing with certain people. You know, for example, Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and grow wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. And it says we're not to be uh, associated with someone who's a hothead, easily angered. It says, Do not make friends with an angry person uh, or one who is easily angered, lest you learn his ways and get yourself ensnared. And so there's wise principle there that we need to be cautious about who we get close to, how much we interact with them. This doesn't mean we treat them less than or any differently in the sense that we're mean to them or anything like that. But we do have to exercise healthy distance and boundaries from certain types of people. Uh, I find it interesting, though, that in this story... These men brought trouble on their whole households. It wasn't just them that suffered the results of their rebellious, sinful choices. It was their whole families that suffered it uh, from that. And the earth opened up and swallowed them and everything they owned. And, you know, we might ask ourselves, well, why, why would God allow that to happen to their children and their wives? Their wives and their children, you know, were just kind of like associated with them. They didn't really, they weren't really the ones who who joined that rebellion, per se. We don't know if they were really in with it or not. But we do know that the Bible says the soul who sins will be the soul that dies. And also we know that the Scripture says children aren't supposed to be put to death for the sins of their parents, nor parents be put to death for the sins of their children. And so we see God's not, you know, out to punish children for the sins of their fathers or fathers and mothers for the sins that their children commit. You know, that's, uh, that's not how God works. We each are responsible before God for our own sin. But I'd like to think about it this way. Think about how many times we see someone who's engaged in something and their parents, they are a parent, they're a father or mother. How often do we see children suffer from a parent's addiction or or it, we see children and families suffer for what? The 
father's gambling addiction. That happens all the time. Or maybe the mother's drug addiction or whatever it may be. And so oftentimes our sin does not always just affect us negatively. It can affect those who are associated with us. And uh, there are too many people these days making terrible choices in their lives. And they'll, they'll not just bring themselves down, but they'll bring those down who are associated with them, their families, their children. You know, and that's why, you know, the Bible is, gives us these instructions. God doesn't want us to hurt people, ourselves, through our sin, or those around us. He wants us to live lives that are pleasing to him that bring him glory and honor and and don't put other people in harm's way because oftentimes our sins don't just affect us you know we might do something wrong and it might affect a whole list of other people and so that's why we got to really be careful because the way sin spreads is it doesn't just affect us in our own little bubble it doesn't and you can you can deny it. You can say, "Well, my choices are mine. It, it they only affect me. Don't judge me. Get out of my business." But you know they they will affect other people, whether you like it or not. And that is what the principle we're getting at today is that our choices will have an impact on everybody around us, whether big or small. You know, depending on the sin, it can it can definitely impact the lives of many, many, many people. And it doesn't just affect us. It's like throwing a rock in a pond. It creates a ripple effect. And that's the way our sin creates a ripple effect on people's lives, on the lives of those around us. Also, we got to think when we do something good, when we're glorifying the Lord and honoring him and doing the things that please him and sharing the gospel, that also has a ripple effect, a ripple effect effect for the good. And so we should make our the goal of our lives to spread good, not harm to other people. Because every time we do do something that scripture tells us not to do, somebody else, ourselves, or somebody else will be affected by it. And we got to really think of carefully about how we choose to live our lives. So we're not creating a a string of victims as we just go throughout our lives making our choices saying, hey, it doesn't affect anybody but myself because that's just not true. God bless.